Hey there guys, guys, and I'm by new pals. Uh, if my voice is a bit rough today, please excuse me, last night was terrible. So, uh, as you can t tell by the fact that there's a vlog today, there's no Bloodborne. There's no Bloodborne because while I did get Fallout caught up this week, Bloodborne will be next week. I only have so much energy and I'm having to be very careful with it. But it, there's gonna be, there is going to be Bloodborne next week and the following week and the following week and the following week. I just, I'm trying to figure out a new way of working that works with my health rather than against it. But while I have no Bloodborne this week, we are doing something Bloodborne related. And that is why, as things stand right now, Bloodborne it has become my favourite Souls game. Full stop. Which is a big thing for me to say because I am such a fan of Dark Souls 1. Dark Souls 1 is just... An incredible game. Dark Souls 2 is, if you ignore the DLC, an incredible game. And uh, Dark Souls 3 is just mind-blowing for me. I know there are lots of people who have their own critiques of it and their own problems with every one of the games in, in the series. But I have to say for me, Bloodborne is my favourite. And the reason Bloodborne is my favourite, well, it's a Call of Cthulhu thing. As I've gotten further into the game, I've gone from thinking, okay, it's um, less about a Victorian vigilante who brings some justice on your head from the palace to the riverside. If you cross him, he'll be dead. Uh, it's not just, it started feeling like that. It started feeling like you were this Victorian era vigilante going after werewolves, which was great. I loved that. And in some ways, I kind of wish that was the story. But it's not. As a whole, Bloodborne feels almost like a fever dream. It feels like that horrible, sticky, messy, claustrophobic, uh, fear-ridden fever dream you had when you had uh, tonsillitis or you had appendicitis or you had a kidney infection that was so bad they almost hospitalized you. It's that kind of yeah feel to it. But at the same time, because you are such a powerful character and you have such agency within the game, it doesn't feel horrible as such. It is a horror game. And that is something I I don't I'm not gonna say that most people miss, but I'm certain that some people do miss is the fact that it is in fact a horror game. It's not just an action RPG. Dark Souls is an action RPG. Bloodborne, to me, is a horror game that happens to be living inside an action RPG. And I did say it was a Call of Cthulhu thing. And the reason I said that is, to me, especially now that the sun-kissed raisins with gangly arms and legs have shown up, it feels kind of like that time when H.R. Geiger... H.P. Lovecraft and Miyazaki-san got together one dark and stormy night and drank absinthe. <laughs> and probably dropped some shrooms too. It's... It has that real In the Mountains of Madness uh, vibe to it. It has this feeling of just powers that human beings simply cannot comprehend have been unleashed. And you're never going to really, truly understand them. Are they gods? Maybe. Are they simply people from another realm who are addled by the by Yarnum? Maybe. Are they figments of the sh the imagination of a shared dream? Maybe. Are they real? Maybe. Are they? Something else entirely. Are they something that's so real that it comes at unreality from the other side? Maybe. And that's the point of Bloodborne. There's so many maybes. Which is one of the things I adore about Bloodborne. It's why it's my favourite game in the Souls series. Is While Dark Souls has got a great story. Despite what many people say. The core story is actually pretty clear cut. You know, it's about the cycle of fire. It's about you're trying, you know, the core story of Dark Souls is very easy to track. 
it's the stuff around it that's very tenuous and that's where lore hounds have their bread and butter because it's like mm, hmm patches hmm Henri hmm pontiff sullivan hmm nito hmm who is the furtive pygmy hmm of course we've gotten some of those answers at the end of dark souls 3 but they were very tenuous whereas in bloodborne everything is tenuous at least so far i mean admittedly i've just only i'm only rec i reckon about halfway through the game because i still haven't touched the dlc um i know i'm not that far into it because i can f there's a feeling i'm not that far into it i haven't gone that deep into the chalice dungeons but right now for me and no spoilers please <laughs> if you're going to comment no spoilers the core story is kind of fuzzy on the edges i know there's a set there is a solid core of iron running down the center of that fuzziness but i haven't figured out what that core of iron is shaped as yet for all i know it's a pretzel but i haven't found it yet and because of that the that that fuzziness around it and even that the, then the surrounding frame of secondary stories surrounding that are incredibly tenuous they're so it's like they're sliding over each other have you ever watched gravel falling on top of itself that's what it feels like to me which is wonderful and it to me at least it means that in a way that is far more significant than any other souls game and i haven't played demon souls so i don't know about demon souls but far more than the other three the other three games in the soulsborne series your experience your emotional and story experience of bloodborne is going to be unique to you utterly unique to you i mean there's going to be certain things that are shared like the doll german the little girl fuck you miyazaki fuck you you magnificent bastard um but to me that's that's one of the wonderful things about bloodborne is I don't think anybody else is going to is going to play this game and come out of the other end of it having the same feeling about the story and the same experience of the story and the, the same perspective on the story because this is a very mystery driven horror story and I don't think it's a mystery that has all that many solid points along the route um the bosses i think are like beacons going out like a string of pearls in the dark but it's far more like the forbidden woods between those beacons yeah there's a route but there's a lot of different ways to go along that route and that in itself lends itself to an experience that is so personal I can't think of another game that's given me that experience in recent years. Anyway, that's my feelings on Bloodborne and why I love it so much. So, hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a great weekend. You've had a great weekend. I hope you have a great week coming up. Be good. Talk to you again soon. Bye.